After completing the outcome assessment just recently, we are now ready for Part 6, the last section of our textbook. In this part, we'll be covering a unit each week. It concentrates overall on using and designing business documents. In Unit 21, we have an orientation to using templates and designing forms. Unit 22 is going to provide practice in the design and layout of cover pages, announcements, flyers, and newsletters. Unit 23 will provide practice in designing an online resume and an overview of mail merge. Unit 24 will emphasize skill building and include a production review using real-world documents related to banking, education, nursing, government, and software development. The first step is Unit 21, Using and Designing Office Forms. We will begin with Lesson 101, Using Correspondence Templates. When you have completed the other drills and exercises, or actually you can do it in any order you wish, you need to look at 101F, Word Processing, Templates, and Correspondence. This is information that you will see on page 416 of your textbook, and we need the Word Manual to complete 101F. You should also be sure that you cover this information in 101E. In 101F, you're going to have an opportunity to practice some of the skills and features of Word that will be required as you do the Form 101-1. And when you're ready for that, Note that there are some alerts over here on the left of the screen. As we do this document, I want to remind you to review the copy to be typed for this memo template. You will need to make the corrections indicated by the proofreader's marks as you type the memo, and our demonstration will guide you through it step by step. We're going to need to select the text to be replaced and begin typing rather than deleting the text. If you delete the text, you also delete the embedded formatting codes. And also, I want to call your attention to the fact that there are two language arts rules applied in this document that are covered earlier in the lesson. Now let's begin work. The top of page 417, we have in the textbook the copy for this memo that you will be completing. Now, as it says on the checklist, you are graded primarily on following directions or instructions rather than formatting since that is automatic in a template, but I will also be paying attention to whether or not you retain the formatting that was intended because if I don't see that, then I can be pretty sure that you actually deleted the text instead of selecting it and typing. Okay, you can click anywhere in this area right here to type the name. We had to apply several proofreading changes here and then you click anywhere in this line for the copy information. Click here to note who it is from. And for the date, what you actually need to do is to delete this field entirely because we are typing in the date that is specified on page 417. You can't just replace the typing. You have to delete the entire field before you can type April 14. 2000 and then the current year. What is this about? Click here in this area and type website update. Now we're ready for the body of the letter. As in the Word Manual example, you can select the entire content and then begin typing. This is the correction for the printing error that is in your textbook. You're supposed to insert the Arbor Station site, but do not capitalize the word the. Okay, I have finished the first paragraph, but take a minute to check proofreader mark corrections. In the last sentence, we needed to switch the order of not only. We needed to delete the word to. And when we are at the end of the paragraph, because of the template formatting, we should only need to press Enter one time. We will still have space between our paragraphs. So here I am pressing Enter one time. 
Then I begin the second paragraph. At the end of the second paragraph, press Enter once and type your reference initials. Not what I type here, but your own. Now, if you ended up deleting the formatting of the template, you're going to need to make correction or press Control Z or undo a number of times so that you get back to the place where you can select the memo text and then begin typing the paragraphs. Now you will find when you are finished that you need to ignore our previous rule for this one instance and actually press enter after your reference initials and then correct that uppercase first initial that Word will insert. We usually avoid keystrokes at the end of the document, but if you score this in GDP without it, you will see a green paragraph mark at the end indicating that you should press Enter. Remember, this is not usually the case, but we're in a unit where we have to apply a few flexible applications of our rules. Okay, as it is, this document should score with zero errors in GDP.